She's just dancing in here. Right. Okay. In the mood for the it's Tuesday night and you're ready to start dancing. Let's party it up. It's ladies' night somewhere. Uh, somewhere. It used to be like Cougar Night at Blue Martini. Was it Cougar <laughs> Tuesday night? Was Cougar Night at Blue Martini? Uh, uh, okay. I think so. Well, <laughs> oh, maybe it was Wednesday. Oh well, whatever. It was a day. One of those there nights. There was a day where there was just okay. cougars running wild. <laughs> we jumped around a lot of topics. Susie Draney uh, from Draney Insurance yes. here with me and Radio Genius, Radio Goddess. Ooh, that Should we go Radio Goddess? Quickly. It, it was barely being on the radio, too. <laughs> radio Genius. Radio, radio Genius, Radio Goddess. I love how low okay. your standards are. No, they are very. <laughs> I'm Ron Futrell. Glad to be here and uh, talking some baseball tonight. I was over, over at the ballpark, Las Vegas ballpark, new stadium, watching batting practice and watching them uh, take some infield, have some fun over there, a mock baseball game. Did you get any game. balls signed? Did not get any balls signed. Did not do that, but it was – but. They they look nice. They look clean, and it was a great good night. That they have clean balls. So. It's always good to have that. <laughs> Joining us now on the line is Fran, Fran. Reardon, oh, the we're new so manager. To have you on, Fran? Are you there? Hello, hello. Said it. We Kenny, lost. Kenny, Fran. you back here? Fran. He's on the other line. Okay, he's trying, he's trying to uh, see if he's. <laughs> by the way, he's on there. You got Fran? Fran, punch you- the button. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, Thank right. you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. You. Yes, our we producer. We were worried about you for a minute there, friend. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. We thought I'm, you were on I'm ESPN or something, <laughs> cheating on us. <laughs> <laughs> we're glad to have you here in Vegas. Tell us about that experience at the ballpark. Now, you've been been a minor league manager for almost 20 years, almost two decades now. Coming here to Vegas with the Oakland A's organization now and doing this. Uh, give Is us. Is this a, your dream job? <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, it, what a fantastic facility. This was just a. An amazing day to, to get out on our field and to, to have all the support from the media out there. And uh, the, the guys were excited. Uh, it was, you know, great to take batting practice and have a little sim game and run around the infield just to experience our field. I know that uh, the guys have been looking forward to it all spring training, and there's been so much hype and so much talk about it. Just to finally get here and experience it was it was a thrill. You got the Oakland A's organization has been – Pretty successful the last couple of years. I mean, they they have a good young minor league and their major league ball team. Am I right? Ninety seven games last year. Is that my memory served me well? No, the, very, that's pretty good. The, we won ninety seven. It was don't 90, let him fool you. He just googled that. I did not Google that one. No, I, I was actually going on <laughs> he memory. He immediately that right before he um, called it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it was no it was. You're with the right organization, wouldn't you say? I mean, I think for Vegas, it's a great organization because you're going to have a lot of good young talent here. And for you, it's got to be a nice fit. Well, it's it's a it's a great fit. You know, this is an organization that's allowed me to, to grow in my time since 2015 with them. Um, our our minor league system has gotten better and better as as the, the years have gone on, and our front office has done a great job not only signing free agents but drafting and developing players so that they can have a huge impact on the major league team. And uh, we saw that last year from the AAA to the major league level. And uh, we have a lot of guys who are primed to make impacts in the major leagues this year that are going to be playing in Las Vegas. So you're, you're exactly right. It's a great organization. And uh, whether you're a player or a coach, it's, it's really fun to be around these guys every day. Susie bought season tickets, by the way. I'm, did. I'm warning you that if, if, if you guys Looks don't perform, <laughs> she is, she's brutal. She's going to be brutal in the stand, Susie. No, I may be Well, a little... she, seems, she sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I have a good time. I hope, we don't, I hope we don't underperform for her because I can see it. Oh, I'll tell you if you do. Quick, I have no problem well. in telling a man that he's underperformed to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, no, there's pressure. There's... there's a little bit of pressure. But there's also excitement. Like, I think it's going to be a great opportunity. Who? Who should we? Whose name should we know on the team that we can chant and just really get out there to start the wave with? Well, we we got some good names on this ball club for sure. I mean, first of all, we got Sky Bolt, which has got to be one of the best names in all of baseball. Um, right. He's a he's an exciting That's... young outfielder. I mean, oh, nice. you, you can't go wrong with that name, right? Yeah, you can't. I like that. I'm making a poster right Sky now. Sky Bolt. Yeah. Sky okay. Bolt. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have some some great young prospects and, and Sean Murphy and Jorge Mateo, Franklin Barreto. Um, Sheldon Noisy, Dustin Fowler. Uh, noisy. I like on. Noisy. I, I, I haven't think... even mentioned any of the pitchers. So oh. we, we've got some really exciting guys, and I think it's going to be a really, really fun brand of baseball for the, the people of Summerlin and Las Vegas to come out and watch. Yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be a great team. What's What's the best team story you've had in your career? 
that you can tell us the is best, a little shady. Yeah, what's a, that, a night that's just gone awry? The radio? <laughs> <laughs> that's clean enough for the radio, yes. Yeah, we don't have any listeners, so don't worry. <laughs> Your secret's well, safe with us. <laughs> Well, I, I, I tell you what, we, we uh, our, our AAA team that was playing in Nashville last year went to and won 15 games in a row and tied the mm-hmm. record for the longest winning streak in all yeah. of the PCL. And that was just a heck of a ride to be on, just going to the park and kind of knowing you're going to win that night. And uh, the guys really had a good time with it. And it was just a lot of laughs, and, and it was just a lot of fun to win that many games in a row. So that's the first one that comes to my mind. That's awesome. We're talking to Fran Reardon, who is the new manager for the Aviators here in Las Vegas. And uh, the new ballpark opens up a week from tonight. First game is going to be played out there at the new ballpark. You take off on the road first. You have some road games. Mm-hmm. But the first home game will be a one week from tonight here in Las Vegas. We gave away some tickets earlier. Did. Susie, you did that. Yeah. So, so Vegas, that's a tough ticket, too. Yes. Yeah, so Susie's, are, like I said, a season ticket holder. So you're, yeah. you're I would like some... to throw out a first pitch. Wait a second. Uh, I mean, not was, really. I mean, you would. It, 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 I don't it, think it would make it to the plate. That's fine. I don't think anybody would mind. You'll be okay with that. But uh, yes. Las Vegas, what uh, have, you, have you been able to spend any time going around the city, hanging out? You certainly have been here plenty of times before, but uh, Summerlin in that area and, and seeing a different part of Las Vegas. What are your thoughts? What well, are you... it's, first of all, this, this is uh, Summerlin just totally different than, than staying on the Strip, obviously. Just the, the natural landscape is, number one, beautiful. Uh, number two, there's so much to do uh, in and around the stadium, and uh, we're staying at the Red Rock Hotel right now, and there's so much great things going on there as far as restaurants and just action in general. But we were fortunate enough. We, we got tickets to the uh, the Golden the Golden Knights game last night. And I'm a big hockey guy, and to, to watch that arena and how, how excited the fans are just kind of, I think, gives me a glimpse into the – the mayhem that, that people feel about their sports here in Las Vegas. So I'm, I'm excited to see those same types of fans come to the, the ballpark here in Las Vegas and, and show that same enthusiasm and passion for the aviators. It's, I, I completely agree. I think this is going to be the place to be in Summerlin, and even Henderson will probably get some people from over there, that other side of the city. It's not that far. <laughs> so you get the 215. It's easy enough to get there. And, but, go ahead. Yeah, so you are. do you have family here, or is it... Are you solo? No, well, I'm just here by myself right now. Okay. My wife and, and I have three kids, three young kids. They're back in. Uh, Are they excited to move to Vegas? Well, they're they're excited to get here. They have to <laughs> wait till they get out of school. But uh, I can't just rip them out of school for yeah. the last two months. <laughs> as much as much you know as I'd like to, I, we don't I, have I, child services have here. It's fine. That. But <laughs> I'm I'm excited for them to get here. They're they're excited to come here because. I've been sending pictures of the stadium, of the the Summerlin area, of the Vegas Strip, and they're they're just really really excited to get here. And Vegas as a community, I mean, your kids will be able to move here, make friends. Like that's one thing that's really awesome about our community is that we we welcome people, um, especially you know when they win games for us. But no pressure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling any. I'm not no. feeling any at all. <laughs> no pressure. We in the media, we in the media can go after you, but when Susie says it, oh no, you, there's no. the pressure. There's the, there's the Are pressure. Are you excited to hit the pool? Um, at the, the stadium. The pool at the stadium? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I might watch. I might watch batting practice from there. I, I may Chris <laughs> that at my new office. Yeah, we should so. get you like a floaty. We'll get you a floaty yeah. to just lay in the pool and direct the team. <laughs> Well, it's 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 got to be comfortable, especially when it starts to get a little bit hotter, and it's mm-hmm. got a great view, so I can still you know, actually do my job. So I think the pool's going to be a great. Did you great demand that in morning. your contract that they had to have a pool? <laughs> they were going to give well, you the job. I mean, that's that, that's kind of confidential, but uh, <laughs> there may have, may not have been some negotiation. There. <laughs> I like that about you, friend. <laughs> let, let the agent, yeah, let the agent deal with some of those little fine points of the contract. What what did you think? And I know you've sort of talked about how how fun that ballpark was out there. But was it what you expected, greater than you expected? What was some of the reaction from some of the players? The grass is newly laid, so it's probably not 100%. It's not going to be – it'll be in better shape next week when you start playing there. But, but that scoreboard that scoreboard is awesome out there, and that's fun. It's going to be a star of the show out there too, as well as the game. That scoreboard is going to be there. So, overall, everybody everybody, two thumbs up with, with what you're seeing with the stadium? Well, I think if, if people had more thumbs, they'd give it more than two thumbs up just yeah. because uh, it just totally went beyond people's expectations. You know, whether whether you were a coach or a player, people within our organization were following the live webcam of the construction, but you can't really get a 
a feel for how spectacular this place is until you, you step inside the building, you walk up onto that field. And, uh, it's just a, it's, it's a palace. It's a just a wonderful place to, to come to work and a, a really, really great place for these guys to come and play. I, I've been in Vegas now 35 years. I'm that old. I got here the yeah. second year of Cashman. Too long. Too long. 35, too 30. long. <laughs> got here the second year of Cashman Field. So I was, and I remember at the time people talking about how great Cashman Field was. And at that time it was, and talking about how just it was the premier facility in all of minor league baseball, which it was, but it didn't take long for that stadium there to get uh, outdated. And for years, I mean, the work that Don Logan and others have put into making this happen mm-hmm. is I, I just couldn't be happier than see Don walk out on the field today, knowing the history of everything he did. And by the way, Kevin Kentop there, the chaplain, and his his dad who brought the team here, Larry Kentop, that was in Spokane at the time and brought them here, that's 36 years ago, but but the stars here, the, the oh, Spokane yeah. Indians here, and then they were the Las Vegas stars, uh, is, was was just uh, put a big smile on my face, Fran, to see all those guys together out there on the field. Larry Kintop has since passed, but to see them here and how hard they've worked to make Vegas baseball work. And I, I dare say I think we we can become a hotbed for baseball when you consider, oh, there's a couple of there, – there's some pretty good big leaguers <laughs> from here yeah. and a great minor league system and, and the, with, the fifth, with the aviators now. And also youth baseball here is putting out some tremendous talent wouldn't you say, I know that's a long intro that I just gave you right there with a lot of history, but w- wouldn't you, w- would you agree with that? With the youth baseball here is just phenomenal and what, what it can do and what it's going to do in the future. Well, yeah, you're not having a lot of history with the uh, youth, youth baseball here in Las Vegas. I can't really speak to that as, as eloquently as you did, but just knowing the history of the uh, professional baseball in Las Vegas and, and understanding the, the just unbelievable amount of work that had to go into having the stadium come to come to be is is just incredible so yeah i, I mean vegas as a, a hotbed of baseball is definitely something that i feel you know just being here for for almost a week now and you know talking about good baseball players from from las vegas i just watched bryce harbor hit, hit a monster home run so i mean he's he's pretty greg good example still here. Of, greg of the talent that's, that's come out of las vegas so it's yeah it's a, definitely a statement that i can get behind as, as far as just area becoming a hotbed i think that where they put the field also is going to be amazing because it is more of a community base so you're going to get families when it was down at cashman it, it was a drive like it's the end of the strip you know by the jail it's not where you want to <laughs> take your kids by the jail yeah. <laughs> so now i think just your team is going to have an amazing response from um Summerlin, Henderson, Boulder City, because it is the area that it's in, and they want to support this. Vegas has wanted something like this that we could come together as a community, and having the Golden Knights and now having the Aviators, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for lots of fun laughs and, you know, to see you guys win. We're excited. Yeah, well, well, I, I think the, the players and, and coaches all share your excitement. Yeah. And, uh, we, we really felt the community support since we've been here and look forward to the the huge crowds that are going to come out next next week, and uh, it's just going to be a really, really good experience. Fran Reardon, Las Vegas Aviators, new manager this year. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for your patience with all the media today and all the requests that you've had to do. We do appreciate that because now you got to head right off the road, uh, on the road, and begin your season. Yeah. So, good luck yeah, there. My we'll, pleasure. We'll see good you back. You guys. We'll see you Very back nice here. Nice to meet you. Back here next Tuesday for opening yeah. night. Okay. Yeah. All right, Fran. I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> Thank you. Guys. That's Thanks. always good. Thank you. So, no, nice guy. Saw him out there, and, and it, it was nice to see all the, the old people and the old faces that, that we hung out together at Cashman Field for so many years. You can't call them old anymore. No, not well, – That's uh, age discrimination. Oh, that's age, age yeah, discrimination, is it? You say that they're – um, Mature? Mature. Mature. Yeah. All the mature people out there. Without smelling people's hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, no Joe Biden stuff going on out there. Okay. Aww. None of that. None of old, none old, old, crazy old Joe. <laughs> none of that happening out there. It was just people having a good time watching uh, what's what's happening out there with the ballpark and enjoying. Oh, now, they did have over at the sales center in downtown Summerlin. Where you were, that's where they were doing some of the food tasting. I did see, yep, there was some at the sales center. So it's right across from the Gap. So if you're interested in getting tickets or want to go check things out or get some memorabilia before it opens next week, uh, go there. It's downtown Summerlin. And then, like I said, it's right across 
the street from the Gap or Banana Republic or whatever one of those. How did you decide where you got your tickets, or did you just let so your I ticket knew, rep? I knew. I just yeah. No, he just told me what was available. Okay. Every just, time, every once in a while, I let a man tell me what to do. <laughs> it's rare, but <laughs> it, it does happen rare, occasionally. But it does happen, yeah. Um. So. Okay, so you had him, uh, the guy that you know from UNLV Baseball, yes, who's yes, now Nate, with yeah. the Aviators. His name is Nate, so Nate. when you call in, ask to talk to Nate. Ask to talk to Nate. Nate yeah. is the guy there that can get you the best tickets. The best tickets, <sighs> not next to me. No, I'm kidding. And I, think, <laughs> I think they've done pretty well, well with ticket sales. I know the opening night is sold out. Yeah, opening night's sold out. But they've done, yeah. I think I think it's it can be called a success so far, and mm. I think it will continue. Here's here's the comparison I like to make, and this is the times that I've gone down to Petco Park in San Diego to watch the Padres play. Right. Usually it's in Dodgers against, or or I or I don't don't even care who they're playing, but go down to watch a game in San Diego. I love that ballpark because you go into the out, you, you enter into the outfield area, and you walk along, and to your right there's a bunch of Places where they're ser- serving food and also drinks and everything. Just it's having a, a gas lamp di- district, right? Gra- yes, yes. But I'm saying once you get in the ballpark, it's the gas yes, the gas lamp district is right there, walking distance. There's a hotel, I think the Omni, that you can buy tickets at, and you can even walk in from the hotel. They have an entrance. Anyway, you go out there beyond the out beyond the outfield wall. There's a grass berm area. There's a big Tony Gwynn statue. There's a thing called Bumblebee Park. And it looks like there's family, group, and friends, and right. everybody's having a good time, and, like, everybody knows each other. Now, I don't know if they do, but it seems like they yeah. do. Like, this is a meeting place for the community. And, oh, by the way, then they have a baseball game that begins later that evening, and they all right. go inside the ballpark. Now, I'm picturing that for this. Yeah. Is it's going to be a meeting place that we have not had here in Las Vegas for the community to hang out, have a good time, enjoy themselves. Yep. And then, oh, by the way, go go in and watch some baseball, have some good food, have some good company, some good friends. Uh, and, and it just, that didn't work at Cashman Field. It will work there in Summerlin with that yeah, new it's, ballpark. Yeah, it's going to work in Summerlin. I fully believe that. I think Cashman was just too far. And even, you know, Thomas and Mac is hard to get down to when you, you live in Summerlin or Henderson areas. This is just at the tips of your fingers. So What's crazy is both are centrally located. And at one time they were, they On were. The they never were built out with. Uh, subdivisions so that the key to this working is there's so many subdivisions and homes that are available to these people so they can make it more of a community like people live there and the 215 beltway yeah thank you bruce woodbury yeah you are thank you bruce woodbury for the the bruce bruce woodbury (laughs) 215 beltway uh, for for seriously for getting that build as a county commissioner and making that happen to have that insight to reserve that land so that you have henderson connected Mm -hmm. you have Summerlin connected i can uh, i would i would rather drive to henderson i live in Summerlin, so i love having the ballpark there and love having the um having city national arena right there in my neighborhood Mm -hmm. i'm thinking of buying a bike and I mean that seriously. Thinking of buying a bike just to, just make to ride it, back and forth, ride back games. and forth, and not yeah. have to park. Yeah. Now parking is free, from what I understand too, which is a see? nice thing. But still, it just be convenient, getting easy. Now, anyway, that being said, if you, I, I would rather go to Henderson for something, which is further, than go downtown, downtown. Mm-hmm. to Cashman Field for something. So if yeah. this, the, the Raiders are building their practice facility in Henderson, it's going to be easily accessible. That'll be nice. That'll be good to be able to do that, to go out and check out Raiders practice when they come here. By the way, that's this time next year. Now, think about that for a second. Yeah, let's not. No, I know you've, so you've already said <laughs> we've already been there. and I, Yes, and it's not it's not my L.A. Rams, right. and it's not your San Diego Chargers or whatever. No, I'm a Vikings fan. I didn't know straight. that. Yeah. You're a Vikings fan? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know what? Yeah, I like a good Viking. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> A good Viking now and yeah. now and again. Not yes. that we're ever good Vikings. They kind of were like they, didn't, they weren't known for being nice people, but <laughs> they did sort of rape, pillage, and plunder on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah, the the East Coast they didn't of, smell anybody's hair because that's weird. No, they just cut their heads off. Uh, the East Coast of, of Great Britain, well, yeah, not real pleased when they had a Viking sighting that would come into their <laughs> like, city. Woo-hoo. That was a, no, that was a little Those rough. Men's and dresses are gonna get no, a little yeah. rough. So, but, no, it was... Uh, yeah, so, the Raiders are going to be in Henderson. Yeah, out in your neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. So you got Raiders out there. Yep. And, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, to seeing baseball one week from tonight. It's going to be there. We'll be hanging out and uh, enjoying ourselves. Are we going to call in from there? 
Um, that's a good question. I got to set that up with Brian, yeah. Brian Shapiro. So the, the Vegas She's take will we'll be on next week. He might have to work <laughs> and not have us here with him next. He's gonna. <laughs> he's still there. Back in, the, in we've the got closet. him. We've got him locked in the closet. We'll eventually let him out for tomorrow night's show. He'll be he'll be out yeah, for tomorrow night's show, and it will be. Um, let's see. We got. Uh, two games left for the Vegas Golden Knights. Mm-hmm. They've got, and then we're in the playoffs. And then the playoffs. And then begin. we're going to win a Stanley Cup. Just put it out to the universe. Yeah. <laughs> you asked Jeff Sharples why we haven't won a cup yet. <laughs> Come on now, second season. I'm an impatient woman. <laughs> no, you are. Yeah, you are. Why have? Yeah, why not that first year? Can't okay, believe then. I'm not wiped up yet. <laughs> why is that I not am happened? Impatient. I thought that's what wives are supposed to be, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, well, he will be back uh, with Sharp. Um, with uh, JD Sharp and we didn't talk any Shapiro. politics. We were we, good we talked me. very other than you, you and your Biden jabs. Well, you know, I think it's funny. Draining insurance. Oh no! I, okay, you had a conversation with one of the producers here in the station about Uber insurance, and I, oh, I yeah, found that fascinating. Fascinating. What, what, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> we really got to figure out what you find. This is my setup. <laughs> this is my setup to you. Okay, take it as a setup. It's yeah, fascinating. Uber insurance. What, 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 you're an Uber driver. What do you do for insurance? What, what so are the rules? They ha- Uber um, has insurance, and and when you're driving, I've been told that you can like use their insurance, but it does charge you for every trip that you do. So Allstate has created an endorsement to where they'll cover you while you're driving as an Uber driver. So you're not taking all of those fees out of your tips and uber fees at the end of the month you're just paying it directly to your insurance carrier and that's one flat fee one flat fee included in your insurance mm-hmm. whatever that is it's so just you... the uber or uh, lyft endorsement okay yeah, so you, can, so you, you can call us and we can quote you and does it ensure the passenger i'm going to say silly stuff ensure the passengers i'm assuming yeah, too so it covers the liability of the people that you're carrying basically okay so, yeah but so, yeah, so your super, phone, your phone number again. Exciting stuff. For, no, Seven, it's... everybody dreams about doing insurance. <laughs> <laughs> your motto again is: Who's protecting your balls? Okay, and then your phone. phone. <laughs> what you mean, baseball? You're talking baseball, basketball, or? No, my dog is. A, I have. I sell pet insurance, and my dog loves his balls. So okay, I protect him. <laughs> protect. Yeah, he's protected. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he's happy. Yes. Um, what's what, your phone number? People can 702 reach you. 702-984-7297 or 702-984-PAUSE because you're in good hands and pause with Allstate. <laughs> there you go. Okay. See, there you go. So it can happen and it would make it happen and, and call Susie if you And ever... Ron is one of my customers. I am. Uh, my home insurance. My yeah, home's insured home with insurance. you. Yes. <laughs> And so far, I haven't had to use any. Been, don't use it. <laughs> don't. No, I've had to before, but not. It was different. It was State Farm. Deny in that claim. It was State Farm. <laughs> what? Thank you so much. No, I, I'm kidding. There's a flood. <laughs> Hold on. My wife's calling. She says the house is flooding right now. Can you come home? You don't have flood insurance. Call Susie <laughs> and me. I, oh, I, I don't have flood insurance. Oh, well. Oh, well, there you go. There it is. All right. Hey, thanks, well, thanks for listening. For that, <laughs> We're out of here now. Susie Draining, Ron Futrell. What Brian. happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> That's what your tagline's supposed to be. <laughs> Perfect.